System processors felt like a black box to me for a long time. But once I realized that they're just a fancy routing matrix with some EQ, delay, polarity, and level management, it unlocked it for me. But I have all these tools available to me, but how would I set it up to control different types of system? What about a simple DJ setup that's just a pair of K12s on sticks and some subs? But what if I get to a bigger system that has multiple line arrays, a bunch of front fills, maybe a uh, horizontal arc sub setup? Who knows? That requires a lot of processing outputs to handle it. How can I simplify it and have a common system to make sure that it is all cohesive and that I can understand it no matter what size setup? So that's why I'm really happy to share with you a phenomenal approach to setting up your processor. And it's called the three-tiered system processor approach that I stole out of Michael Lawrence's book, uh, Between the Lines, Concepts and Sound System Design and Alignment. Definitely check out his book. There's so much more to learn in it. We talk about it in a different video I was able to do with him. It was a three-part series on his his one of his tours where he kind of breaks down his approach. But I want to show you it and spend a little bit more time here and how I, I like to think about it. I'm so pumped to share it with you. And I've actually got a template for the Allen & Heath AHM64 that can demonstrate this. If you don't own this unit, you can use the software, open it up and click around and start experimenting. But the reason why I like this approach so much is that it's universal. It doesn't matter what type of processor you have, you can implement this and make sure that it's cohesive, that you can understand it and have a definite place where every bit of the processing can go. All right, so make sure and grab that template at the link below, and then let's jump right in. So here is the, the overall framework that I've made a graphic for, and we'll step through each of the three tiers. So first up, right here, we got the overall system. So this is any processing applied to the entire thing, and this is usually on the DSP inputs. And then we move on to right here, we have tier two, which is our subsystem. So this would be an individual line array hang or a front fill system or a sub hang or maybe a couple of subs in front of the stage. So this is a subsystem of like speakers all within a particular zone. And then we move down here to tier three and these would be the individual speakers or individual zones of speakers in a line array. So this would be a single front fill speaker or a single delay speaker in a delay ring or a single line array speaker within a hang. So let's dive in with a little bit more detail. So that's the signal flow. First up, we got this tier one. So we can see here this entire system. It's got a bunch of front fills down here. It's got some hangs. We were still getting the trim heights right. So that's where you see those differences. But tier one is coming into the processor inputs. And I usually name that mix left and mix right. I understand some mixers aren't just gonna feed you left, right. They're gonna matrix stuff out or give you aux fed subs. So you could also have left, right, sub and fill another common setup. Even just need to use left, right, you can go from there. So these are the first two inputs coming into your system processor. And that's how I would have those lined up. Let's talk a little bit between mix EQ versus PA EQ. It's common for mix engineers to have some sort of master bus processing or an even equalization that they have. That is for artistic or tonal purposes to make their mix sound good in and of itself. When it's passing into the mix left inputs on your desk, the, let's, we have this EQ over here. I would engage that not to fix something in a mix engineer's mix, but to do something to the entire system. So if I have three mix engineers they're all working with me and they're all hearing this 800 honk or whatever that they don't like, I would go and do that. But if a mix engineer starts doing something to their master bus EQ, I would say like, hey, if you just want to change the way your mix sounds, you're free to do that. If there's any global things with the PA you'd like change, I can do that across here at the tier one approach. Moving on to tier two. So first it was the whole system of tier one. Now we're moving on to an individual subsystem. So this was the earlier system we had, but now closer to the ground. So these five constant curvature array of boxes, the QSC KLA 12s right here, it's all its own individual sub subsystem. So that'll be mains right. I know we've got the subs flown over it, but those get fed a different signal since they're subs, they're not mains. 
So that would be in the system processor file here, PA left. So a really powerful feature, feature in the AHM 64A or the all the AHM series processors from Allen and Heath if they have zone to zone routing. So I'm taking mix left, which is coming in, and I also have my smart inputs and a backup 58. We'll get to that later in the template, but mix left is coming in and being sent to the PA left zone and then under it, on tier three F P A left sent to there. So I can stack the zones with as many zones I can have. I can have one to two, two to three, three to four, whatever I want, but that's all flowing through there. And then I have processing across the entire thing. So I could have an equalizer, I could have delay, I can have another equalizer, whatever I want. But that's tier two, just across this hang of five boxes. So if I wanted to do any tunnel shaping to all five of these, I would do it here with that EQ, or if I needed to delay that the entire main section I would add a delay here later on in the processing block. So for instance, this is a, a hang I have here. This is seven HDL6 boxes. I know it's a little bit hard to see, but it's covering this half of the floor. And I'll need to apply EQ there to get my desired tonal shape. You really think like, well, where's the cutoff? When am I doing using EQ on an individual line array element? And when am I using EQ across the entire array? And the answer is an overlap. When sources are overlapping a lot in their coverage, it's not, uh, I wouldn't say it's futile, but it's not very effective to start messing with an individual element. If you start gain shading or do a whole lot of taking out of low frequencies out of one element versus another, you can get some really interesting lobing problems. Uh, interesting, I mean bad, <laughs> basically some gaps in coverage, which isn't good. I've definitely made that mistake before. So a good rule of thumb is about 1K and below you're gonna have a lot of overlap between your speakers because the lower we go in frequency, the more spherical the waveform is going to be. And it's much easier to control and be directed with high frequencies, which are above 1K. Again, this is a rough rule of thumb, depending on your driver size in the array, that's gonna change. But um, overall, you can, you can start here. So uh, me personally, when I'm doing a subsystem EQ, I'm not worrying about anything above 1K unless the entire thing needs work. And I could quickly, let's say if the entire thing had too much high frequency, I can use a high shelf and knock that down. But those white trace is my target curve and I want the entire room, if possible, to fall along that curve minus some little bit of changes in the high frequencies, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. But I usually, within setting my levels, I set my high frequencies to mostly fall along the line, and then I need to reduce some low frequencies. So what did that look like? So this is in the processor, the EQ curve I had to use across the entire mains right subsystem to get it to fall there. So it's primarily this low shelf with a corner frequency at 500, maybe just above that, and then another additional dip here at about 450, and then a high pass filter at 100 hertz, because that's when I was gonna hand off to my subs. And that flattened it down here. So I got it a little bit down. Uh, I chose to go a little bit lower than my target curve because this was a corporate show. I didn't need quite the bump that was going on. Uh, you see so, a little bit of a discrepancy here in the middle. It's because I later went and added more low end, took a little bit more low end out than I originally thought I was going to. And I had to line them up with these EQ curve or the transfer functions. <clears throat> before I did the high frequency shading. So sorry about that, but that, that's basically where I ended up after applying this EQ right here on the on the entire mains right subsystem. So that's the order of operations, right? Then we're gonna move on to tier three. So this would be in an individual loudspeaker within a subsystem. So it'd be just that top box. So this is mains right. I call that mains right A, and then the mains right B, C, D, E, and just go on with the letters. And let's, so in the system processor, an example of this, you might be PA left, and this PA left zone is routed here to PA left A, B, C, D, and then those individual outputs then get fed to individual speakers. So what does this look like in action? So back to this same show, I got these seven boxes of HDL6A. I did three boxes in the A zone. I, I guess, long story short, I didn't have enough outputs to feed every single box, and so I did top zone of three boxes, the middle zone B of two boxes, and the bottom zone C of two boxes. And we can see that here in the design, this was uh, the coverage looking from the side angle at 4K with a three octave weighting. And now if I just subdivide that out, 
these are the three boxes that are at A, B, and C, and that's their, their basically custody or coverage, right? So this was the mains right before the high frequency shading. So I wanted to tame some of this pink trace, which is down front, and then bring up a little in the back so they can be equal. I, above 8K, I'm hesitant to make everything be lay on top of each other because it feels a little bit weird to be in the very back of the room and, and have the same high frequency content as the very front. It makes it feel closer than it actually is. So I actually didn't end up doing it quite as much as I thought I was going to. But to give you a uh, really complicated idea of the EQ that's needed, it wasn't much. I, I did a boost at A with a high shelf. I did nothing on the B zone. And then on C, I brought the HF down a little bit so it can meet all there in the middle. And you'll notice there's no high pass filter. There's no low mid stuff because I already did that at tier two. So it's cascaded processing. So this was the pre beforehand. Uh, and let's... Let's look up here in the top end. And in post, I was able to bring down that pink trace down more to meet the 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 B trace. Or, or yeah, be the B trace. And then A was brought up a little bit. Again, after listening, I didn't want to bring it up all the way, so I left it there. But we have a pretty good match all the way from looks like about 100 hertz moving up here through the low mids all the way to 8K. And then we diverge a little bit. So I listened and I was happy with this. And I think I also added a little bit of EQ more to bring up this 1.5K dip just a little bit. But all I have to say, that was the basic approach of tier one. I, I, I didn't do anything at that point. I did the subsystem EQ at tier two to get the line array right. And I did high frequency shading on each of the boxes. And the same logic would apply in a front fill system. And so if I wanted to apply a delay to the entire front fill system to get to match the mains, and I needed to use high frequency shading because there might have been different distances of the front fills, I could totally do that. I might take out some low mids with a low shelf across the entire front fill tier two system because I already have a lot of low mids coming off the mains. And so that means I need to push my processing as far upstream as I can. So that's some, some workflow tips we'll talk, talk through. So moving the, the processing as far upstream as you can means you're not having to double up. Again, on tier three, if I would have put a high pass filter on A and B and C, well, I could have just done that at tier two. I don't want to have to do it, double it up. And so I know that's going to be consistent across the entire line array. So let's move that up to tier two. Or if the mix engineer, and I'm the system engineer, looks at me, he's like, hey, I need a little more top out of the whole rig. And he doesn't want to do it on his desk. I would then go up to tier one across his pair of inputs his or her inputs, and then use a high shelf and bump up a little bit and see who gets more top. And that's the great thing is like, since I that's a, at his or her pair of inputs, let's say I'm working with another artist next, the, the, the headliner, they can be in inputs three and four. And if they want a different tonality out of the system, I can then apply it there. So that's why it's, it's great to have um, a number of inputs on your processor so you're not stuck. So you can be accommodate different artists' preferences. So going back to our workflow tips, we want to move move processing as far upstream as you can so you can be efficient. And number two, keep low frequency processing on subsystems, high frequency processing on individual loudspeakers. Again, you can use a high shelf across the entire rig if you want the entire thing to be bright. But when you're starting to get granular is when you can really only do that in the high frequencies. Uh, you can't do granular massaging on each element within a subsystem on the low frequencies because the amount of overlap between them. And number three is stay organized. So definitely map out, map out your I.O. because this your signal is being split a lot of different places, especially if you're dealing with a lot of large format systems with a lot of different boxes. So I would say in advance, make a little chart like I did at the very top and see if you can map out the system. Your mix inputs and then, okay, that's going to main left, main right, and show your front fills and the number of, of boxes you have. And this will help give you a really good mental map and picture of what's going on with your system. And then you can build a system processor file to suit that. Again, I really like the AHM64. There are plenty of other great processors out there, but I think it does a good job of, of accommodating this style of processing the system. All right, now let me open up the template. And this is for a simple PA left, PA right, sub, and fill system. 
you this is more to illustrate the the, the tier one, tier three, two, tier two, tier three processing more than like this is the perfect PA processing file ever. Uh, I'll show you what that looks like at the AHM64, and then you can take these principles and extract it to whatever processor you're using. Okay, let's start with our inputs being tier one. I've chose to have in the template left, right, sub, and fill. You could always bring this down just to a stereo input feed of the mix, but sometimes it's nice to be able to matrix stuff out to adjust your tops versus your subs. Maybe you're doing a corporate show, you don't want your lives going to subs. Uh, I experienced this uh, just last week where someone kept hitting their chest and I just fed left, right into the system like I usually do. And there was a lot of boom in the system, even with the high pass filter. So I could definitely see in some situations where it might be helpful to matrix stuff out. So therefore uh, I sent my lav and handheld and all dialog mics into a subgroup that fed into a, a dialog bus that was matrix to just the left, right and fill system on the inputs and then subs got playback in my band group um, and didn't get any of the open dialog microphones. So that's the flexibility you can have if that's a useful tool for you. Simplicity, I like just running mix left, right if I'm doing a band, but corporate, I think it'd be a little bit different. The other inputs I have as nine and 10 is smart left and right. So this is a uh, basically a, a not quite stereo, but a left and right feed from the machine running smart. So that can have the signal generator running in. And then when I'm also playing my reference tracks that comes off the same machine in here in a nine and 10, then I have a backup 58 that I plug into here just in case my console goes down. There's a wired 58 with a hundred foot XLR that I can grab um, and where anyone could to make an announcement over the PA just in case the console is down. So that's what I have set up here on the inputs. This left and right, then it's cascaded to these zones as well as other sub and fill. So that goes to PA left and then I have four, so that's tier two, and then I have four tier three zones on that, PA right with four tier three zones. I have sub with four tier three zones after that, and then fill with four of those. So these could be front fills, they could be side fills, they they could be a true like out, out fill or side hangs, it, up to you to, to, to figure out how these go. But this gets you started here with that. Here's tier two, I can apply any EQ processing, I can apply any delay here, I can set my levels for that entire tier two zone, and then that flows directly into here PA left A, and then that, again, runs through its own individual EQ. I guess we wouldn't need a compressor, but its own level setting. And then it then flows to the output. I have these uh, outputs polarity inverted because I was wor working with some HDL6A, so I'll make sure that's <laughs> corrected in the template. But anyway, that's that's the approach. We have tier one, or, or inputs, can apply any global EQ across the system. PA left is tier two, or, at, or that zone, PA right, sub and front fill or fill and then tier three is the individual zones so you may ask well how come i have four different sub outputs well i could have different clusters i could have a uh, horizontal sub ar ar arc array i could have an end fire array i could have uh, inline gradient and you need multiple outputs to add you know some cocktail of delay or level offset or polarity inversion to make all that happen. So anyway, that's why those outputs are there. Again, fill, this could be several front fills, side side hangs, whatever you need to have going. So again, I just hope this illustrates this three-tiered processing. Check it out. Let's recap. Tier one is our overall system. Tier two is the individual subsystem. Tier three is the individual loudspeaker. If you can, move the processing as far upstream as you can so you can keep it efficient and stay organized. This is signal splitting and going a lot of places. So take the time to make an IO map, use the little mind mapping tool I, I made or something similar to show how it flows from tier one and two and three. And that will save you a lot of time in the field so you can be ready for it. All right. My name is Michael Curtis. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Hope this is helpful to you. Again, you can get that template at the link below and I will catch you next time.